homemade gifts, always an option, but today we're not talking about homemade gifts. Flight 527 ready for departure. Welcome to My Moxie Life. My name is Martha and this is my husband Jared. I asked <laughs> I asked him to dress up a little bit for the video. So there you go. He dressed up a little bit. Got a tie on. That's, that's <laughs> as dressed up as I ever get. So <laughs> I love it. Um, so welcome and I'm glad you're here. And we decided we wanted to do a top five Father's Day gift suggestion video. So what I wanted to start out with is history because I like to know the backgrounds of things, especially holidays, because some of them seem so random. And so I looked up Father's Day. Did you know that Father's Day started in 1910 by a girl named Sonora Smart Dodd who decided she wanted to celebrate her dad who as a single father raised six kids and she found out or she decided that she wanted to do this after uh, someone she knew celebrated Mother's Day and she didn't have a mother so she decided she wanted to honor her dad. So that is how Father's Day started. I did so not know that. That is a good reason to celebrate, right? All right. So um, we're going to talk about some awesome gifts and I had my husband pick them out because he is a dad. Yes. <laughs> and uh, all of our children are grown now. And uh, so I wanted to show you first, there's definitely the era of homemade gifts. And that's usually when kids are smaller. And so these are a couple of homemade gifts that we have uh, on hand. Um, I don't know where the picture went Not for this currently one. currently in use, that long. <laughs> yeah, so um, each of the kids, we have three kids, each of the kids decorated a letter and then we put it on a frame. Super cute, right? Yes. And then we did this one, which was my a brilliant creation. I don't know if you can see it very well, but each of the kids did the little monkey, see no evil, hear no evil. And it says, ears have never heard of, eyes have never seen, or words cannot express how great a dad you are. This is 2005. So we are talking about other gifts. Okay, so we've got five things and we're gonna start with number one. All right? All right. Ready? Yeah. All right, so <clears throat> here we go. So the first thing that I put on my list was this super wide brim hat, I think is the description on Amazon for it. Um, and I have a couple different ones of these. I like this one. I have kind of like a straw uh, like one that looks a little better, uh, but I like this one actually for traveling because you can just fold it up and put it in your bag like this, even though it's Travel super tip. big. Um, and I like it because I, I started getting hats like this uh, when because our daughter was doing um, rowing and then later one of her sons did track as well but um, like when you're at kind of a spectator at those kind of sports you do a lot of standing around outside in the sun and I do not like getting sunburned and, and I it also sunburned easily P.S. I also don't like always putting sunscreen on my face though too at the same time so with a hat like this unless you're just like looking up a lot uh, it usually gives you plenty of shade it's a good look so could wear that to the horse races too. Yeah, and like I said, I like this one because you can just like kind of fold it up and throw Goes it in well. the bag. It pairs well with a tie. <laughs> yeah. I'm pretty sure I've never worn it with a tie. And uh, we, every, all of these items will have links in the description um, to Amazon. And that one is about, I think it was like $18, $19. Yeah, that's right. Um, and the next one, about the same price range. This is uh, my favorite coffee cup. Uh, if you're like me, you are addicted to coffee. Uh, I do need to have this every morning. Uh, this is drinks a, it all day. <laughs> yeah, so one of the things I like about this cup, actually, it's a 20 ounce cup. Uh, a few things I like about it. One, like Martha said, it lasts, it keeps things hot a long time. Like I made this coffee that's in here right now, um, maybe four, four and a half hours ago even. Uh, and I like to kind of drink it gradually over the course of my morning and it is still hot uh, after all that time. So that's a bonus, uh, unless you like drinking coffee that gets cold. Um, and the other thing I like about it is it's dishwasher safe. So you can just open it up and stick it in the dishwasher and you don't have to worry. Sometimes these insulated cups, like there's parts of them where you can't dishwash or whatever, but and this, is this well, one you can just open up and toss in there. Well loved. It has lots of dents in it. 
which is fine. Still works. <laughs> Still works. As long as it stands ways. up. <laughs> <laughs> yep. All right. Uh, Item that's, number that's also about 20 bucks on yes, Amazon. I don't know sorry. if I mentioned that. Um, Item number three, <clears throat> sir. Yeah. Item number three, and I don't remember how much this one is. I'll have to look up. Oh, okay. Oh, you did your research. Uh, item number three that I put on my list is a car uh, battery slash jump starter thing. Um, this is useful for if you or if you're at Arcade, your kids. Uh, or your wife. Or, well, I wasn't going to throw you under the bus, but if anyone you know uh, <laughs> has their battery die and you need to go give them a jump start, um, you can use jumper cables too, but... Having this in your car is a lot easier because then... Or if you need to do it yourself. If you need to do it yourself, exactly. You don't need to flag someone else down. Uh, it's a little battery pack that you can just keep with you as long as it's charged up in your car. It's about this size. Um, and it comes with an assortment of cables, but some of them are ones that you can just clamp right onto your battery and jumpstart your own car without needing to you know, flag someone else down or use big bulky jumper cables. Uh, you just pull this out, hook it up to your battery, and boom, jump start it. Uh, and it also has other features too, like a flashlight thing, and I'll try not to shine it right in the camera, but, um, and also like a USB charging port, so you can also use the battery to uh, charge, your, charge your other stuff if you, if you need to do that. And that is uh, also gonna be linked, and it is about $54, $55. There's other um, different ones that were a little bit more, same, same company, but they had little different features. So, um, but I'm going to link that one specifically, and it is about 55 bucks. All right. And then, uh, speaking of chargers, I also put uh, phone chargers on my list. And so, uh, I wanted to give you a couple bits of, like, kind of pro tips information. If you're looking for a portable, like, a battery that you can just, like, carry around with you and plug in to charge your phone... Or if you're looking for, um, I also like to take one of these multi-port charger things that you can actually plug in to an outlet and then charge like multiple devices at a time. Uh, the thing I wanted to specifically mention on these is if you're shopping for either one, the portable one or the AC adapter plug-in one, you want to make sure to research what fast charging technology your phone or other device uses. Uh, because like most of these kind of things you can plug in a USB cord and as long as the, the the right end fits in this end and the right end fits in your phone for example it's gonna charge it but if it's not the right fast charging technology it might take a long time so most modern phones like I think most iPhones and like I use an Android I use a pixel 3 most of the uh, modern Android phones uh, all use a fast charging technology called power delivery or sometimes you'll just see it abbreviated PD for short so uh, when you're buying one of these, just make sure to look up, but I actually like this one that takes a cord because I got a, like, it comes with a long cord, and sometimes, like, if you're traveling, um, when you're in hotels, sometimes the plugs That's aren't always in close. the most accessible places, <laughs> and so it helps to have a long cord like this where you can just plug in wherever the plug is, and then this can be actually wherever you want it, closer to you, like, and next to your bed or whatever. Uh, so, I forgot off the top of my head, I do not remember <laughs> Uh, it, a good one of these, a good portable one of these is probably more expensive. It's probably like 50. Um, and this one, like a good one of these, if you're getting like the power delivery ones with a lot of watts, it's probably also like in the, maybe the $50 range. Right. Uh, the other thing to look for though also is like some modern laptops, like both of the laptops we have can also now charge via just like a USB-C cable, uh, using that same power delivery standard. But if you're looking for that, you also have to, the other thing, one more thing you have to check when you're getting these chargers is how many watts it supplies. Okay, because like most of your form, <laughs> your phones, we're going to take, like if it's a power delivery device, it'll it'll take whatever. But for a computer, it's going to require more power. So you have to make sure that uh, the battery or the charger thing that you get puts out at least like 60 watts or so to power like a computer, like a laptop right. computer. So if you have younger kids, you're going to have to help them buy that because that's a little pricey. Hopefully, if you have older kids, they have a job, so they can buy it themselves. <laughs> and that power delivery standard also works on like Nintendo Switch devices too, so Ooh, either for you or your kids. Important. Yes. All right. So our uh, our fifth item, which is kind of a multi-item item. I cheated on this one. And it's a very important item in our house because this particular person is very into. Board games. Probably everyone, I would guess, at some point in their lives has played a board game. Uh, but if you've only played games like Monopoly or Risk or some of those old school ones, 
uh, or even worse, like Candyland or something like that. Um, <laughs> not to bag on those games, but they're not great. Um, there's actually been in the last like 10 years and especially the last five years, there's been a huge like explosion in the board game scene and like a lot of new games designed to address a lot of the shortcomings in some of those older games. Like if you ever played a frustrating game of Monopoly that took forever and people eventually who didn't win at least uh, did not like, did not enjoy their experience. Uh, a lot of modern games de are designed to uh, alleviate or avoid those kinds of frustrating parts and give you an experience that's faster, number one, and more fun for everyone who's playing. Um, there's a lot of games that I like that are more, uh, like I use the term heavy, but it's like they're maybe in like the 45 minute, 90 minute, even up to like two or three hour hours. range. <laughs> We're uh, talking hours. I will not talk about those right now because I don't think those are like general purpose gifts. If you are into board games, then I maybe I'll do a different video recommending those. But the games I brought That's to talk about channel. today, and I'm just I'm not going to talk about them in a ton of detail. I'm just going to briefly mention them. These are games that, at least in my experience, everyone who's tried them, so like all the members of our family. I've played them and enjoyed them, and they're short. They're like, you know, 45 minutes to an hour. And I don't time. like the same kinds of games he does at all. <laughs> and all of these I've played, and I would play again. So that's a good... Yeah, and as a general <laughs> rule, like for the this list we're talking about giving somebody a gift, uh, I would say the most important thing, even though there's games other than these that I like a little more personally, I one of the things that I love about all of these games is that other people will play them with me. <laughs> I mean, I have a gaming group that other people play the more nerdy games with me, but like for like family stuff. If he's uh, just around the house and he wants to one of the us most to important, play. Yeah. One of the most important qualities is of a game is that other people will actually want to play it with you. Um, so this stack here. And I'll go through each, each of these briefly. Like I said, these are all games that are super easy to learn and pick up and you can play them like in under an hour, uh, sometimes even faster. And these uh, range from about $15 up to about 45. Right, so here's a cool one, uh, Lantern's Dice. It's a, uh, I guess you kind of call it like a dice drafting game. You have a pool of dice in the middle, you're gonna roll them and each, each person is taking turns selecting which dice they're gonna use and everyone else, uh, that determines what everyone else is gonna use that turn as well. And it's a, a couple of these are actually a style of game called like a roll and write, which means like you do something like roll dice, in some cases it's real cards, and then that determines what everybody else can do on their turn. Super fun, uh, and you're like everybody's filling out a sheet as they go, uh, kind of based on that same central piece of information. And a game that's similar to that also, this is a really popular one in that category, is Welcome To. Um, and this one works a little differently. Instead of rolling dice, you're flipping up cards that determine like the available actions for that round. And you're filling in, everybody's filling in their own sheet of these like neighborhood streets with these different cards that you're flipping this up. This one is actually pretty fun. Uh, I like that one. As opposed to... Well, I think I like a better than Lantern. Okay. Here's another one, a uh, good one. Code Names. This is a party game. Uh, those other games, actually, I should have mentioned. Lantern's Dice, you can only play up to four players. Welcome to the house one that I just showed. That's unlimited number of players because everyone has their own sheet and they're just doing uh, their own thing. This is another game that you could do any number of players on because you're actually just like splitting up into two teams and you're kind of like revealing uh, these or you're, you're one person is giving clues to their team to try to guess the right cards in this grid. Uh, and it's a pretty fun one. Uh, like I said, you can just like split up whatever size of a group you're playing with into two teams. Uh, as long as you have one person giving the clue every time and it's super fun. I've never played this with a group of people who didn't like it. Um, super easy to understand. Uh, here's another fun one, Sushi Roll. Uh, this is kind of a takeoff on an earlier game uh, called Sushi Go, which was like a card drafting game. This one, instead of cards, it uses dice and so you're rolling dice and then you're selecting those on each of your turns to pick out which one you're going to use on your own kind of player mat to, to score and then you rotate those around the table and um, and then you roll them as you roll as well so it's kind of a cool mechanic where you can kind of see what you might get in terms of like the different types of dice but when you get them you have to roll them so you don't know exactly what their values are going to be uh, but anyway that's a cool fun one uh, I don't want to spend too much time talking about each of these but um, Downforce is another really cool one uh, this one is by Restoration Games, and so uh, they kind of specialize in taking older games and kind of making modern 
uh, revamps of them. So I think this was actually a game that was out there before. I had never heard of it before this, but um, you may have played an older version of this, but it's actually a racing car game. So you have a race car track, and then you have I like what you said, that race a race car track. <laughs> For the NASCAR fans out there, I don't know how similar it is to NASCAR because I've never watched that, but uh, you have a hand of cards and you're playing, everybody takes turns playing a card from their hand that determines how far or how many spaces on the track their car and everyone else's goes on that turn. And you can kind of do that strategically and all of the numbers are different, of course. So obviously you want your car to win, but you can also play them strategically because certain spots in the track, there's only room for a, like a couple cars to go by. And so if you get by there and then the number that you played indicates somebody else has to go a certain number of spaces, they might get stuck in that, in that narrow spot because you can't go past another car. So it's kind of a cool uh, board game version of a, of a racing game. And then the last one I have here is Azul. Uh, this is like a tile placement game. Uh, and everyone is kind of taking turns picking tiles of a certain color out of the center, placing them on their board, and then uh, kind of trying to fill in these different requirements here. I'm not going to explain the whole game, but this is another one where it's like super easy to learn. Everyone likes it. Uh, this is a max of four players, I think. And I think this is the most expensive one out of the group. I think. Uh, it, yeah, probably. Yeah, the um, code, code names is the cheapest. It's about $15, $16. And then this is in the, I think it's in the 40s, like low 40s. Yeah, and for people who do get, uh, there's uh, like, I, again, for most of these, I don't know anybody who doesn't like them, but Azul is super popular these days for like intro level board gaming people, and they've actually started like a whole line. There's two other versions of Azul that are, they play similarly, but uh, they have slight variations that Sorry. make it a little. So that is our five items, but in true oh, yeah. style, <laughs> in true style, oh, you forgot, you didn't bring it with you? Do you want to go get it? No, I did. Oh, uh, I just oh. forgot. Just right now. Okay, so our uh, um, last thing that we're going to talk about, or he's going to talk about, because <laughs> he's the dad, <laughs> um, is a trip. But it has a bonus item that goes with the trip. So that's take right. Take it away. So a trip is a gift. It's I guess maybe not necessarily a physical gift, but. Uh, I put it on the list just because like we really like to travel and that's obviously part of like Martha's job, a big re part of that and a big benefit of that is getting to travel more. Um, but regardless of kind of what's in the scope of your budget, obviously like, you know, you can fly different places and that could be more expensive if you don't have uh, the flight benefits. Um, but you can, you know, you, there's shorter things you can do as well, just like driving distance stuff that you can go. Uh, for like just an overnight or even just a single day, like an all day thing. Um, so I wanted to put that on my trip on my list just because it's the kind of thing where it's maybe not a traditional gift, but it's something like I really enjoy uh, just taking little trips like that. And sometimes even more than just like a, like a gift that someone would pick out for me. Yeah. So. I know that a couple times like Mother's Day, Father's Day, we've taken just a drive and gone on a hike or found a waterfall or tried a new restaurant somewhere in a different town that we wouldn't normally go to. So it's kind of fun just to kind of get off the beaten path and get out of the house. Um, although I know a lot of Father's Days, we have Mexican food here. So <laughs> if you're flying somewhere, uh, I have an updated recommendation. If you remember, if you've been a subscriber for a long time, we did a video before uh, together with recommended like travel tip um, accessories Do you specifically want to watch for that? traveling. I'll link it. Uh, so yeah, <laughs> in that video I recommended something uh, called a flight flap, which was like a little foldable thing that you can put in the seat in front of you to kind of hold your tablet up on. So instead of like watching a movie or whatever you're watching on your tablet and staring down the whole time, you can actually hang it up like at eye level and just be able to look forward, which is because a on lot my more airline there's no TVs. Right. So uh, you, the idea is you kind of like fold it in behind the tray table and then you close it and it holds your thing up. Uh, I actually found over time, especially on different airlines or different airplanes, depending on the, the plane you're on, that little flat thing doesn't always fit exactly right or, or very well. And so what I use these days instead of that, I don't use the flight flap anymore. I use these things called air clips. Uh, and it's a similar idea. They just hook into either the tray table uh, or like sometimes they'll have like a little document holder thing that you can hook into and then you just slide your tablet in there and it holds it up kind of again just like at eye level and it makes uh, watching stuff a lot easier because you're not like looking down the entire time uh, and you don't have to have your table open either you can just have a little more room for yourself there so, so travel there tips 
plus gift ideas. What more could you ask for on my Moxie Life? <laughs> Nothing. All right, that's it. All right, thanks for joining us today. I hope that you've enjoyed this and I hope you found some good tips for your next Father's Day. Get busy. It is on Sunday, June 21st. Have a great day. Bye.